My name is Stuart Robinson. I did 16 years in the RAF Regiment before I was injured in Afghanistan and then made the transition across to playing sport. Uh, now playing, well after three Invictus Games and then made the transition across to uh, compete in the GB Paralympic World Rugby Team. I met uh, Stuart after completing my Phase 1 training as Regiment Gunner. I successfully completed that and I went to 15 Squadron in the start of 2008 and that's when I met him. Uh, him and John O were both junior NCOs on the flight and we came under them as the, as the Gunners. We got ready for deployment to Iraq and that's really where I kind of got to know him as a joker that he is. He was an outstanding bloke and I think for myself, the, the the leadership and just the, the the memories that I've got of him are pretty much faultless. We had a good time in Iraq. There was not any any really dark moments or, or bad points to that particular tour, uh, and I got to know him really really well. There was a group of us that really gelled. Stuart was a brilliant corporal. I remember one particular incident where I got told off for not having a T-shirt uh, underneath my uniform and he lent me his, and I still actually have got that to this day. I was in Afghanistan in 2013. We'd set out on a patrol to one of the local villages. As we set off in the vehicle to have a, have a chat with the head man of the local village, unfortunately we drove over and initiated an improvised explosive device. As we drove over it, literally the wheel that was underneath my seat initiated the device. It ejected me clear from the vehicle, and I found 30, 30 metres away, face down in the, on the ground. I suffered an immediate loss of my left leg, and I think altogether about 36 fractures across the rest of my body. Uh, I was then shipped back to uh, Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, where I was uh, placed in an induced coma for the next 10 weeks. When I uh, awoke, I was in a pretty bad, bad way, obviously. My uh, whole body was in traction. My jaw was wide shut, so I couldn't speak to people. Uh, I knew that I was in a pretty bad way, but my overriding um, memory from waking up is the fact that I was just glad that I could even open my eyes. I mean, there's been so many people who paid all the sacrifice serving uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq and, and obviously other uh, theatres. Um, but for me to be able to at least open my eyes, I felt grateful that I was able to do that. So, yeah. Following uh, his accident, we kind of went separate ways, really. I've seen him a lot uh, since then, um, at reunions and uh, meetings, but uh, his his path has become an, an athlete uh, and mine is uh, continuing the RAF, has, has kind of seen us going different directions, but. I still get to speak to him every now and again, uh, and that's always a, a delight listening to what he's going to say. Um, he's got a pretty dark sense of humour, so it always makes me smile. Initially, after my injury, uh, my goal was when I, once I decided that I could actually get quite far within the wheelchair rugby environment, I thought, let's give at least one good go at trying to get to a Paralympic Games because I wanted to try and uh, make my, my kids proud of me still being the dad and the fact that I couldn't still water to the shops so I couldn't still play football with them but I wanted them now to look up to me and still say that's my dad that's playing sport now so I wanted to at least make one Paralympic Games and now we've qualified for it I've just got to make the effort to be selected but now that I've found that my fitness levels are not too bad I think maybe that I could probably push on for a, a few more Paralympic Games just depends on, on how long we can uh, keep the old body going. Obviously everybody wants to be the best that they can be so a lot of people say that obviously I'm just taking taking parts the only thing that counts but for me, That's I'm right. quite, quite the opposite. I'm quite, well, quite sports-driven, quite winning-driven. The, the fact that if, if we come second, I, I don't see that as a, a great accomplishment. I see that as a, you, you didn't come first, so you've got to win. So actually the, the main goal for, for myself and the rest of the rest of the GB squad is to go out to Tokyo next year and to come back with a medal. So, And fingers crossed, if we can do that, it'll kick on and we'll, we'll keep pushing on for a few more years, yeah. Stuart's done a fantastic job. He, you know, his, his marriage to Amy and two two fantastic children that he's he's raised a, a testament to him uh, as a person and his his courage really and his, his his caring nature i spoke to him this morning actually as always he, he put a smile on my face so uh, you know i look forward to seeing what the what the future brings for him outside of obviously the, the sporting world i'm an ambassador for the rf benevolent fund obviously helping promote the, the amazing work that they've done they've been Amazing for the work they've done for me and, and my family and, and the whole situation of what's, what's been going on, going on with me. Well, really good to see you today. So, uh, thanks for coming up today. I think it's really helpful to us um, that you come and talk about what you're up to for a simple reason. 
a lot of the, the youngsters, and you know, I call them youngsters, being old, and work in the organisation, you know, been in the Air Force themselves. So they, it helps them to better understand where you've come from, yeah. what's happened to you, and, and, and put that context around it. Yeah. Because that's really important so they understand what they're doing and how it helps people like you. Yeah. Um, so what have you been up to recently then? I've been away I'm playing a lot of I've been obviously playing sport, which is a bit of my day to day job right now. You leave the military at a certain point, um, finish your re recovery rehab, but that doesn't mean your recovery stops there. Um, you carry on day to day living and, and learning how to do um, different things daily and, and, and how to get on with life with your yeah. disability really. So. And how's the family about, about, about stuff? Because, uh, Pretty tough on them as well. Yeah, I think uh, again, I've been from um, so able and so more while I've been for a month, it's been quite a different change to being back in a chair and not being able to. Even yesterday, going to watch Stuart play football, and obviously, there's only a certain amount of track that goes around that side of the pitch before you have to try and get onto the grass. And in a, in a wheelchair, it's pretty difficult, especially with the, the, with the, wet and the, the mud and the rain. So uh, you have to watch from afar, or in some cases, you can't even go and watch. So it's been Find any ways of adapting things. But it's been shown since since day one from my injury that the, what the help that you guys have given me has been invaluable. Um, from the getting me up and about on my feet, um, getting me up and about moving and getting me active in the, with the, the chairs and the the, um, the the hands like really got me, and then the the adaptions to the house. Um, it's made my life so um, so so seamless the transition from being an able-bodied person to who I am now. Mm. Um, and that's something all down to you guys. Thank you. Looking forward. Then. Because it's some time you know, since since the injuries. Um, what's your biggest worry? What's the biggest challenge for the next 10, 20? I mean, you're a young bloke. Um, you're looking at another you know, 30, 40, 50 years. What, what's going to be your biggest challenge? Um, I think the uh, lifespan of, like I said, being quite a young person, and I'm, I'm quite fit and healthy, so using the prosthetics, I can put them on and get on with life as it is. But, there's only there's going to be a certain amount of time where my body's going to say, look, enough is enough, you can't go on the process because well, you've got to get in the chair. So I think the biggest fear is obviously when that day comes that I can't be as mobile. And, and I know I'm pretty mobile now in the chair, but I think even, even when playing a high level sport, which you've got to use your arms and your body quite a lot, it's going to make it tough for me outside of the sport when I'm trying to push in my day chair. So um, at the moment, though, it's, things are looking pretty up. I think I'm quite looking forward to. Um, Carrying on with the way things are, and yeah, we just seem to have to take these days it comes. Yeah, thanks very much for coming. Thank mm -hmm. you, sir. It's important to us as well. You know, it's it's a, it's a circular thing. It's really important to us, and it's it's good to see you so well. Initially, my view of my thoughts being that I was quite glad to uh, at least be able to open my eyes. Um, and one of the first things that the medical team said to me was that my right leg wasn't healing correctly. Uh, it was still intact, just, um, but they said. Uh, you're due to go to surgery tomorrow anyway, uh, to have some surgeries on your, your pelvis um, while we're in there because your right leg's not healing correctly, would you like to have it electively uh, amputated at the same time? Uh, and my initial thought was no, not a chance, I'd like to keep it, I'd like to try and at least be able to stand on one leg and see how we get on. But after more talks with my, uh, my wife and um, from the medical team, they told me that it could be 18 months before I could even put weight on the leg, so I made a decision there and then that obviously my rehab starts there and then there's, I'm not waiting 18 or two years to to put weight on that long walk so let's just lose a leg let's go on with life and let's start from here so I think that whole frame of thought uh, that we've got going on uh, helped me obviously for the longer I've gone on for my sporting career so just getting on with things so as soon as it happens and not not being able to dwell on things helps you every day really for me yeah. I didn't even really take it in that my, my, my legs have gone except and all the injuries that happened and what happened so to, to get the news maybe that this is going to happen further down the line probably would have been a bit hard to believe but I think that I've always been quite a determined individual so I think that the the will has always been there it's just I think a matter of fact of getting my skill set up to that level to, to be able to compete at that level but and now I'm hopefully at that level so we'll see how we go. Yeah.